Lord with us. Whether you're in the tabernacle or watching online, we want to welcome you. We're just saying that the river of the Lord is flowing today, and we're going to turn it up with our praise.
heart overcome by your love and freedom. Here we stand, lifted hands to the King. Bringing our everything to the one deserving all the praise that our hearts could ever sing. Come on, let's brag on him. Oh, oh you are amazing. You are amazing God. The everlasting one. The everlasting one. Yeah. You are the risen King. Oh, you are the Son.
We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together and worship and love on you, the one true living God. This morning we thank you for salvation. We thank you for life. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. Father God, we just call to our minds all those things that you have truly done for us. And we are thankful. We are thankful. So let our worship to you this morning be the reasonable response when we think of who you are and what you have done. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we say together, amen. Every season, you are. You are, you are worthy. I know one can worship you for me. Tell him, say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. All of my yeah. worship. Receive. Receive my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Everything we give to you, God. All of my
one more time. You deserve it. 
Until you feel the power of God 
of God in here me. I said give them a praise until the power of God moves your problem. I dare you to lift your hands and praise God. I heard your Holy Ghost. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, give me a praise that will fix things in your future. Praise that will fix things in your future. Praise Him, glorify Him, magnify Him. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm gonna rejoice. I'm gonna praise Him. I'm not gonna stop. Devil, you should have never touched me. You should have never put your hands on me. But since you did, I'm gonna give God all the glory. And tell you, my child, I feel something shifting. Since you bothered me, I'm gonna give you all the praise. I dare every worshiper in here to scream, to shout, to dance. To worship him, to magnify him. Come on, choir. Come on, choir. And then I must shine the more hope. My devashi, I'm in my land of it. I don't know what you lost, but this praise is about to bring it all back. I'm about to get my mind back. I'm about to get my body back. I'm about to get my eyesight back. I'm about to get my creativity back. I'm about to get my mobility back. I'm about to get my joy back. I'm about to get my peace back. I'm about to get everything. Come on, there is a praise that's gonna fix things in your future. Shout, yell, wave, jump. There is still a praise that's you there is still a shout that's going to fix things in your future i'm gonna keep saying it there is a praise that's going to fix things in your future all the praisers all the worshipers shout out to god with the voice of triumph everybody scream We believe in the Holy Ghost here. I want you to lift up that name. That's above every name. Jesus. Lift it up. Jesus. Lift it up. Jesus. Lift it up. Jesus. Just got saved on this one. I'm telling you, things are shifting. Say, hey, the lily of the valley. Hey, the bright and morning star. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What's me? Say cheese! 
you are worshiping down front, you can go back to your seats as we continue to just say the name. Jesus, Jesus. Put me in the key we were just in. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name. Come on, one day. in every circumstance. We speak the name that is above every name. We speak the name that is most high, that is mighty, that is magnificent. We say the name. We say the name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, he that has begun a good work in you, if he finished it, he's gonna start it, and he is faithful to perform it. So we're gonna minister to you a song called A Great Work with the incomparable Elder Wendell Lowe in the Harvest Music Live Chorale. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it's about tackles in the road to leave you feeling low and you don't know how to move forward. Sometimes there are turns you want to take, but the way seems hard. Shakobashaya. a weighty anointing in this room right now. Come on, let's acknowledge. Hallelujah. Now I declare you will know the favor of the Lord and receive a harvest for your seed. Oh. What he's planted inside of you to bless the world as it blooms. Oh, oh, oh. It's faithful to perform. God is. Oh, oh he. Great work. He is faithful to perform. God is faithful to perform. So if you ever get discouraged, lift your hands and say, God is doing a great work. Great work, 
forgive me. Help me cry singing. Thank you, Jesus. Still in a great world. Oh, in me, God is. Take a look at me. He's doing a great work. Can't you see he's doing a great work in me? It's already done. The work 
stillness is the language of death. If you can move, move. the language of defeat. If you got a voice, lift it up. If you shout, that oppression would come off you. If you shout, that religious devil would come off you. If you shout, he'd heal your body now. you stifle. Religion wants you halt and withered and blind. Move. Move. Move your arms. Move your, Move your, arms. your legs. Your legs. Move your head. Move your head. Spin. Spin. Yeah. Start throwing Pakistan pictures up on this screen and let's start rejoicing. Let's start rejoicing for over 3,000 Muslim salvations in the last six days. Shout because Pakistan shall be That's the birth of two new churches in Pakistan. Thousands being baptized, thousands being born again, devils being cast out, the blind are seeing, the lame are walking. Somebody give God praise. Go back to that motorbike one. Look at that. Those are pastors that we just city harvest, world harvest church pastors that we just gave brand new motorcycles with PA systems attached to them. Somebody give him glory. Bless those pastors. Come on, somebody pray over those pastors. Father God, we thank you that for every man that has decided to walk into the call of God, I thank you, God, right now that you're stirring in them a fire that they've never experienced before. God, I thank you that when they teach the word, demons will flee. God, I thank you that when they lift their hands, burdens will be removed. God, I thank you that when they stand in front of the people, that your glory will fall. God, we thank you that you are going before them and making every crooked way straight because Pakistan shall be saved. If you believe it, scream. Now we've got we've got one of our team back. We've got Jared back. Where are you, Jared? Come up here. You saw Jared's picture up there just a minute ago. 
This is Jared. He works in the City Harvest Network aspect of our ministry. This happened on Friday night. On Friday night. Pastor Fios says, Amanda and Fios are still there. Said, I went into the crowd and noticed a woman sitting in a chair, listen to me, unable to move. Stillness is the language of death. That's right, Pastor. I went into the crowd and I saw this woman. I had no idea what was wrong with her. So I brought up an interpreter who told me that the woman was totally blind. Oh, uh, that's her right there. As I began praying for her, three women around her began foaming at the mouth shaking violently so i prayed for them i rebuked the demon spirits and they were all three immediately set free born again baptized in the holy ghost this is in a 98 percent muslim nation Then I laid my hands on the blind woman and commanded her eyes to be open. We watched. Were you there? I was there. Did you see it? I was the one that prayed for her, Pastor. You prayed for her. I prayed for her. Oh, you prayed for her. I prayed for her. I thought Pastor Fias prayed for her. You prayed I for her. I prayed for her. You laid your hands on her. I laid my hands on her under that seven times greater anointing that God put on your life. Look, America can't even shout. They can't even stand up. These people waited in line for 10 hours to get into the presence of God. We are lukewarm, we are backslidden, and we need to cry out in repentance. What happened? Pastor, as I laid my hands on her and began to pray, I saw God. Now, wait God. a minute. Wait just a minute. How long have you been here? About 60 days. 60 days? Yes, sir. What happened to you when we first came into contact maybe, I don't know, a year ago? I felt God begin to touch my heart just to, to, for you to be my spiritual father, for me to come under what God is doing in your life, Pastor. And God has blessed me You've so much. You've been in a denomination how many years? About 10 years, Pastor. Are you still in that denomination? No, sir. You're ordained by City Harvest Network. Yes, sir. And you've been here 60 days, and I saw the power of God before you came here, had you ever been slain in the Holy Ghost? Maybe one or two times. One Pastor. or two times. What happened to you when I laid my hands on you the first time? Pastor, the anointing that was on your life touched me. Something came into me and I began to see God do miracles everywhere I went. You began to see God do miracles. Miracles. People everywhere get set free. you went. Devils come out everywhere I went. There's some devils going to come out this morning. A prophetic word. Jared, cast out those religious devils. Right now we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ and we command every devil to flee in the authority of Jesus' name. You ain't no strong man devil. The only strong man is Jesus. And so we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
and start worshiping. Start crying out the name Jesus. Jesus. A gift of spirits are coming out. Jesus. Sickness, disease, disease. coming out. Stand right there. Okay, stand right there. Now then, you go in a, out in this thousands of people. Amen. Yes, sir. And you see a woman sitting there. Yes, sir. Like people sit on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. They want to keep them devils. They don't want to get rid of them. What? Uh, the people want to keep the devils. Because I asked God, I said, God, why is this happening here? He said, the church in America wants to hold on to the devils rather than see me cast them out of their life. You didn't hear what he said. No, you didn't hear what he said. Because you're still being silent and patty caking like you're in some stupid opera. Some of you need to lose yourself in the Holy Ghost. You're full of pride. Wave your hands, shout, clap, leap, dance. There's revival on. You need to get in it. Wait a minute now. Woo! Woo! So Jared asked me, Pastor, I want to go to Pakistan. I can't stand this anointing on me. So I said, well, all right, go ahead. I preached for a lady and her husband uh, Friday night. Friday night. She got on her knees weeping and begged me to let her go to Pakistan. She just came back from Pakistan and in her meeting, 10,000, she's a City of Harvest Network leader, 10,000 Muslims came to Christ. If American, if the American church doesn't want to get saved, I'll go where they do. You don't want to shout, I'll go where they do. You don't want to give him praise that is worthy and not religious. Oh wait, why don't you have a microphone? No, give him a microphone. Yes, sir. We got it. Sir, we're good, Pastor. We're good. We bless you, our king. We're ready. You corrected me. No, sir. No, sir. I helped you. Okay, so I went and preached for them, right? Yes, sir. How long did I preach? An hour and 35 minutes. That was the least I preached all week. Correct. Usually over two hours. Correct. Did any church have anybody get up and leave? Not one. Did anybody watch their clock? No, sir. Did anybody tell me to quit? No, sir. Did they get mad when I did? Literally. Mad. There are hungry people in America. Come on. I mean hungry. Yes. There were a couple hundred people in that meeting Friday night. And this woman just came back from Pakistan. Yes. I thought they had 10,000 saved. Yes, How many did they have saved? 23,000 23,000. Oh. 
and they're all getting in. Yeah. World Harvest Church, City Harvest Network churches, yeah. pastored by men like you just saw, casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead in a 98% Muslim nation. Pastor, Pastor, can I say one thing? The thing that shook, it was two things about that testimony she gave that shook me to my core. Glory be to God. The first was obviously that 23,000 people gave their lives to the Lord. But here was the other thing she said real fast, that she was the only woman preacher that was able to go into that country. Because it's Pakistan. Because it's Pakistan. And while you was just streaming, I heard the Holy Ghost say to me, to every woman, God's about to take the shackles off and God's about to call you to the ministry. Lose There's an anointing that's Lose coming on your life. Lose to see the captain Lose set every free, woman. The blind to every see, woman. the ears to open. Fill every God's woman. about to use you, not just on a Your family, on your job, now preach in elder. your neighborhood, now preach, preach out out. there all the ladies, now preach elder. all the ladies, preach elder. scream right now. If you're a man and you want that for your woman, shout now. Wait a minute now. All right, so, so, you weighed out in that crowd. Yes, sir. Show me one of those crowds. There. That's just one little tiny shot. We had 500 people in the launch of our 23rd church None of those people go to any of our other churches. They started last week with 500 souls that had been born again in the crusade. These aren't warned over. These aren't people that have been to their 25th church. Because they keep trying to find one that'll do it the way they want it. Look at them. Look at them. Bugs are eating them up. Look at them. No air conditioning. Right. Look at them. No fans. Look at them. They're sitting on the dirt. But I prophesy. Prophesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beginning from this place. This place. Yeah, yeah. Will be a people. Will be a people. With the greatest hunger for God. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the United States of America. Yeah. Give us souls lest we die. Heal the sick lest we die. Cast out devils. Way out in the crowd, Pastor. Look at it. All the way out there. Oh, it goes way on, doesn't it? Way back. Hey. Woo! Hey. What's going to happen when I show up? I come on. I come on, come Look on. Look at you standing. What's going to happen when I show up? Woo! You wade out in there. Way out, Pastor. And you see a woman. Sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair like Sunday morning folk. Like Sunday morning. And what happened? She was sitting there and she was just so broken. 
I saw, just saw the brokenness on her life. There was nothing that could, that could let her free. And, and when I went up to minister to her, I was praying and I felt that resistance, that demonic resistance. And I opened my eyes to see what on earth is this? And I looked and I said, oh devil, not today. You're not holding back their healing not today. today You're not holding back their miracle not today. today. The glory of God departed. God departed means judgment. Means judgment is delayed. Is delayed. You know what's wrong with the American church? They see no judgment. Wow. They worship their worship, idolize their preaching. Yeah. Yeah. He's not Rod Parsley. He's not Benny Hinn. Yep. He's not Morris Sorello. Come on. He's not. Come on. You don't even know him. But God knows him. Yes, he does. And so does the devil. I'm going to say it again. The presence of God. The presence of God departed. Departed. Means judgment. Means judgment is delayed. Is delayed. When you are backslidden and lukewarm, you come to church, do your religious church thing. And go and live in defeat and poverty and trouble and sickness and accidents and disease. Here's why. You got no presence. You come in here to get a little touch of presence when God commanded you to come in here overflowing with the glory of God before you ever get in these rooms. You're not supposed to come here to be a consumer. Shove somebody and say, I refuse to be a consumer. I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. Today, I refuse to I be become a contributor, a contributor to revival. To revival. Now shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. God just healed. I don't think I've ever said this. God just healed a bunch of teeth. Jesus. If you've had mouth pain, run up here right now. Any kind of pain in your mouth, your jaw. Come on, run. You should have already been in the front. She turned on my head and hit it my How long has I been there? 
couple couple months because you clench your mouth. Well, you're not going to anymore. No! Hallelujah! No, you'll never do it again. Is she ever going to clench her mouth never again? Never again. Ever. 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 Okay, take your hand off her. No, take your hand off her. Atta boy. Uh, watch this. You're awesome. Yes, Tell God he's awesome. You're awesome, God. You're Worship awesome. him. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Lord, the Lord, go over there by him. you, go over there by him. Here's what the Lord says to you. I brought you from a mighty long way. Everything to this point has been prologue. Get ready. Oh my God. I just saw you shoot up like through an elevator shaft shoot up and bust out the top of the building. Get ready for elevation. elevation. Now lay your hands on them. God will heal them as we worship him together. Give me some more pictures. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, this is the church where another demon boy got cast out, water baptized the next day. What? What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that the woman? Go back. That was the woman that got healed right there. That's when she came to testify. You see, she got pupils in her eyes. Her eyes were completely white. Wow. wow. Her eyes were completely white. That milky gray white. Yes. You could not distinguish a pupil in her eyes at all. She doesn't have a doctor. Right, right. She can't go to hospital. It's God or nothing. Right. Now, so you go out there. So you go out there. Yes, sir. Right. And this woman's sitting there and she has just like milk in her eyes. No, no pupils in her eyes. Yes, sir. And so when you start Watch me. When you start to bring the presence, anointing, uh -huh. and power of God yes. toward this woman, what happens around her? I felt this strong resistance, Pastor, and I opened, I had my eyes closed when I was praying. I opened my eyes to see what it was. So you're praying and you feel this resistance. Yes, sir. <sighs> That's the reason I can't preach in most places. I can preach here. 
and I'm preaching in Elkhart. You feel that coming. Yes, sir. Are you learning anything, church? Some of you never feel resistance because you have become comfortable around devils. And devils are comfortable around you. That's right. If you are an adulterer, you should feel uncomfortable here. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right, Pastor. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 If you are a thief and a liar, you should feel uncomfortable here. Yeah. And if they're not, then we don't have enough presence yeah. here. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. That's right. You get in the presence of God, Ananias and Sapphira, right. your devils will fall dead. Come yeah. on. We don't know the Bible. I tried to listen to a preacher, dear God. One of the three biggest churches in America. Everybody always bragging on him. People around me always bragging on him. I listen to him all the time. Well, you don't. You don't know what the word is. You sit and listen to leadership principles. No anointing. None. No power. No glory. Oh, but I like this. Yeah, because the devil's got you on the wrong track. That's right. He got you on the money success track right. instead of the God and glory track. Right. Amen. I had to turn it off. If I want to listen to psychology, I'll listen to Dr. Uncle Phil. Right, right. <laughs> The American church is dying because the preachers are backslidden. And y'all support them. Oh, aren't they me? You want to build an organization, go build Amway. Go sell cars. We're building a kingdom. Come on. Me and Jared. Me and Jared, we're building the kingdom. Come on, Pastor. I said we're building the kingdom. Come on. Yeah. Well, you're making me uncomfortable. Good. Good. Maybe you'll get close enough to God, you get an ounce of conviction in your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to babysit you to hell. This is World Harvest Church. Where we cast out devils. Where we speak with other tongues. Where we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Raise your left hand, God will put his anointing in it. Pray for him, Elder Canfield. I buried Norville. I've got his anointing. It's in my left hand. Yeah, yeah. Release it to every person who's not living in sin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the anointing. Everybody pray. That breaks every yoke. We thank you, Heavenly Father. It was in Smith Wigglesworth. It was in Dr. Lester Summerall. It was in Norval Hayes. And we thank you. It's in Dr. Rod Parsley. God, for every person that is connected 
for every person that is determined to stay connected and to stay free from uncleanness and sin. We pray, God, for the healing anointing of Almighty God in a seven times greater measure being demonstrated in their lives from this moment forward. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody receive it and shout about it right now. Oh, I feel it. I got a witness. I got a witness. If you're wondering why I shout, it's cause I can. You shut up, devil. Everybody stretch your hands this way. On three, shout the victors, shout. Dance the victors, dance. Clap the victors, clap. Sing the victors song. One, two, three. Yeah! Okay, what? Yeah. While I was over there a minute ago, Hallelujah. Holy Ghost said to me to tell every person who believes you received when Elder Canfield prayed, you believed, you received the healing anointing in your left hand which is your covenant right you believe you received when we prayed lift your left hand if you know somebody who is sick afflicted tormented needs a miracle if you know somebody like that raise your right hand you go this week you tell them what happened to you this morning and you pray for them you lay your left hand very gently on them and you pray you command sickness to come out of them and god will heal them if you give him some kind of praise that he knows you believe right now Jared. Okay, so yeah, that's right. I'm not the only one with the healing anointing of God. Elder Canfield's not the only one. Pastor Cow's not the only one. Elder G not the only one. Although he got a seven times greater anointing on what night? Friday night. Because you left your kids. Yes, sir. You left your wife. Yes, sir. And you went and stood with me. Yes, sir. For four days. Yes, sir. And God the Holy Ghost, yes, while I was laying hands on other people, said, lay hands on your son and I'll give him a seven times greater anointing. Just get some more. You follow me around, honey, you get some.
something. You can't leave your wife, you ain't getting nothing. Did you leave your wife? Did she go with you? Right there. No, did you leave her to go to Pakistan? Yes, sir. You were here by yourself, right? With your children. And you let him go, right? You weren't like, I need family time. Your family gets saved, you wouldn't need so much time. Do you think I'm playing? I intend to pastor saved people. People that you don't have to beg to church. People that don't have their nose stuck up in the air. People that can't forgive. People that can't sell out. People that are just in the kingdom for what they think they can get out of it. I'm pastoring saved people, sold out people, praying people, giving people, worshiping people. If that's you, shout now. Now then. Uh, I need two seeds of a thousand dollars. Now, I need two seeds of a thousand dollars. One, two. Okay, you give that to me, I'm going to give it to Jared. Well, I appreciate it, but it didn't have nothing to do with me. All I did is say it. So, Jared, you start to pray. Yes, sir. You start to pray. And you have your eyes closed. Now, let me help you. From now on, if you have to close your eyes when you pray to shut yourself out from doubt and unbelief, okay. But men of God have to learn and women of God have to learn to watch and pray. Because you bring that anointing. You bring that anointing presence of God departed means judgment delayed. So what's the opposite of that? When the presence of God draws near, judgment is immediate. And the judgment is upon the darkness that tries to remain in the midst of God's people. So why don't you just praise it out of your life right now? boy bring your boy bring your boy come here buddy where are your kids this morning by the way where are your kids there's some, they're not in church and the reason they're not is because you tell them Jesus is worth dying for and then they look at you and say you don't even live for him That's a handsome boy, Jerry. Thank you, Pastor. God does miracles. Amen. <laughs> What's your name? Jaden. Jaden. Jaden? Mm -hmm. I like that name. I like that name. Woo. I don't like calling people to ministry, but God, God has, now watch, has an evangelistic anointing on you. 
What does that mean? That means God's going to let you win people to Jesus easy. God's going to give you miracle signs and wonders. God's going to let prophetic words flow out of you. You might, you might be a banker, but still all those things will be in your life. I don't know what you'll be. I'm not calling you to five-fold ministry. I'm telling you what's on you. I'm telling your dad and your mom what's on you so they can cultivate that and keep you around me because it's all over me. It's sad, but I have more influence on some people's children than I have over them. Now then, this past Wednesday night, yes, sir. were you back? I just got back at midnight Wednesday night. Okay, so you weren't here during no. service. No, sir. So like you are out flying around, coming home from Pakistan. Yes, sir. But your son and your wife were in church. Yes, sir. Oh. Isn't that interesting? How about that? Isn't that interesting? Well, you know, the kids got homework. Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Pastor, can I say something about that? No. Yes. All right. <laughs> when my children were in school, here at Harvest Preparatory School. Okay, wait a minute. Your children were in Harvest Preparatory School their entire life. Yes, sir. Yeah. From preschool. Well... It started when they were yeah, because we, we just started. Yeah, yeah. They graduated from here. Yes, sir. All of them. Yes. And what kind of grades did they make? Well, one was the valedictorian of her graduating class. Yes. Her twin sister was the salutatorian of her graduating. So class. the twins were valedictorian, salutatorian. And our son was the salutatorian of his graduating class. Yeah. At that time, yeah. when they were when they were in elementary school. We had music rehearsal twice a week. Yes, twice you did. a week. And, and we had kids. church Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday night. Morning. We had three services on Sunday morning. Sunday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, yep. Thursday night. Yes. Did you miss any? No. And neither did my kids. Now here's the thing. Oh yeah. They did their homework during those music practices, laying on the pews. They, they were there. They did their homework while they were laying on the pews. And, and they played with one of those little games. No, they didn't have that stuff. No, they didn't have that stuff. <laughs> and they didn't suffer academically as a result of it either. Why would they? Why would they? Why would they? I'm just telling you, folks. Come on now. This just rod right now. A lot of folk need to get saved, man. I mean, like, no, really. I mean, like, really saved. Because part of the reason you're so miserable is because you're trying to act saved, and you're trying to be better, and you're trying to do good. And you're trying to operate in wisdom and you couldn't make the right choice if it slapped you right in the face. Because you're not sold out. You're just not surrendered. Church is just something you do on Sunday if everything's going right. Now you're good people. That's not, that's not the issue. You're good people. But here's what's happening right now. The glory of God and the presence of God are so close to us that all the junk is coming to the surface. When presence is manifested, judgment is swift. Instead of receiving it, what we want to do is Oop! Now eat! I'll tear you! 
the moment you have that attitude, you show your backslidden condition. What you should be doing, we should be doing, is falling on our face and saying, God, there's something not right in me. Reveal to me the hidden sin of my heart so I can get it taken care of and get the full joy of my salvation back. If that world is more attractive to you than God's kingdom, yeah. you are on your way to hell. I don't care how pretty you are. That's right. Now that's what's on us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what's on us. Yes, sir. If God's not putting your, his hand on things right now in your life for the past several weeks or months, yeah. something's wrong. Something's wrong. Raise your hand if you ever had to teach a child how to lie. Raise your hand if your kids and you know somebody else's kids that just lied naturally. Yeah. You don't teach a child to lie. Why do we have to teach supposed born again Christians to pray? Why? The natural response of a new life is to cry out. So if your prayer life feels like this, then you need to start crying out. When's the last time God woke you up at three or four o'clock in the morning and you prayed till the sun came up? When's the last time you had to pull your car over in a parking lot and sit there and weep in the presence of God? Yeah. Folks, you have sold your experience with God so short. Yes, yes. You're troubled all the time. You just use God to get you out of a fix. Right. Man, God wants to take hold of your life. Yeah. Yes. Like he wants you really to become a new creature. Really. So other people look at you and go, what's up with you? And don't say something like, well, I started going to church. No. Anything to do with going to church. It has to do with just selling out to Jesus. Now watch this. Watch this. So you are in Pakistan healing blind people your family is in church how old are you 13 13 and you were in next harvest mm -hmm. and who did he say who was in there you weren't in there because you were with me yes but he got a hold of whoever was leading yes and I said what he said, God has given me a word. He's 13. Your sons and your daughters yes. will stop smoking crack and sleeping with everything in town yeah. and start prophesying when you sell out. When you sell out, your family will be saved. Yes, when you sell out. By the way, how many meals did you give up so that your children would make heaven this week? Oh, oh none. Oh none. But you got to go to the gym and work out. Maybe you need to go to your prayer closet and work out. Yes, yes. Maybe you don't need Jenny Craig. Maybe you need to put your fork down and go up in your bedroom and worship. Maybe you need to turn the television off and put on Harvest Music Live. 
and start singing powerful grace yes. and fill your house with the glory of God. Then your children, 13 years old, will interrupt the service and say, I have a word from the Lord. If you remember, Pastor, a couple of weeks ago when we were in Georgia. I don't know where we yeah, were. Yeah, Jared was sharing with us that God put it upon his heart to fast. Oh, yeah. Remember that? That God told him to start fasting, fasting, excuse me, and he just started fasting and never stopped. He's 13. And while he was fasting, this is confirmation that, I'm, you know, how many of you fasted for your kids? He, while he was fasting during that time, he was believing God for some things, right? Imagine a 13 year old boy. I can kind of imagine what some of those things are. And he said, a man walked up to him and gave him a pocket full of money, hundreds of dollars. So he can get what he was believing God for. I don't mean to encourage you to start fasting, but maybe God's ready to break heaven open based upon your sacrifice. So God tells me to get you $2,000. And pastor, what? sorry, I'm helping you. I'm not interrupting you. Oh, honey, I don't care. You, your beautiful daughter text in. My daughter. Miss Ashton Blair Parsons. Yeah, my baby. Your baby says she also wants to sow a thousand dollars into his life as well. If it was your three, you'd be shouting. We rejoice when one rejoices. Coming back from Pakistan, your family's in church, your son's at next harvest, and he's over there interrupting the service. He's been fasting, and people are sticking money in his pockets. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he's prophesied. That sounds like a pretty happy family to me. Amen. We got to get this thing right, y'all. Yes, yes. God, I, I heard you. God said, tell them, if Baal is God, then get out of the church and worship him. Don't play around at it. If I was going to be lost and know I was going to hell, I'd grab everything I could right now. But I got a better home waiting. And this one ain't bad. This one ain't bad. I'd like to know the drug that could do for me what I feel right now. Look at that little boy. I need to teach him how to hunt. He looks like a hunter. Well, you can take pictures of him. I put you in the deer stand, and you can just take pictures of the deer. So I know where they are. You ever eat deer? You like it? I get you some. So you prophesied to next harvest. Did you feel the spirit of God on you? Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. yeah. Can I give you a hug? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jared feels that resistance because the presence of God, you see, is coming to meet a need. 
And so all the devils around it, they all get stirred up. That's why when we're in revival like this, people start gossiping. And they start complaining. See? They ought to be thankful. Yeah, they ought to be thankful. We all should be. That God would determine in his counsel to visit us. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. And so, Jared, you felt that, and you opened your eyes, and there are three other women foaming at the mouth and convulsing. Yes, sir. And so what did you do? As I began to pray, God told me the spirit of infirmity, and yeah. I began to come against it, and I bound it in the yeah. authority of Jesus' name yeah. and rebuked it. Next thing I know, the devil left him. They shook, fell on the ground, got up, went to the stage, started testifying of God's delivering power in their life, gave their life to Jesus. They're Muslims. And, and Pastor, as I, as I looked at this woman that was blind, yeah. I literally, I saw clouds like going in a circle in her eyes. It was like when, when Genesis says the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the deep. God began to hover over her eyes and immediately I saw God form them in her eyes. It was the most, God began to give her sight. She got up, started praising God. She began to declare what God was doing. And look at her eyes. She started seeing perfectly. Pastor, it's because the seven times greater anointing that God said would be on your life when he healed you, it was there in this place. And some of these people here need to get up under that anointing rather than watching the anointing and become a contributor to what God is doing. Become a contributor. Contributor. Come under. Come under that. They're too busy standing back watching it. They need to surrender because when I came to this church, I came under your covering. I came under your noise. It was when I came under. It wasn't what God was just doing in my life. It was because I came under what God was doing in your life. And you don't know this, Pastor, but my earthly father died of throat cancer. And when God put me under your anointing, God told me, I am restoring back and giving you a spiritual father that has power over it. Hey! <laughs> Well, I've, I sense the Holy Spirit. Everybody, if you would, worshipfully return to your seats. We bless the Lord. We thank Him. We glorify Him. We magnify His holy name. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Worthy. You are worthy of our praise and worthy of our worship. Worthy. You are worthy of our adoration. Worthy. You are glorious and holy. You are mighty. Mighty. Merciful. Merciful. Thank you, Jesus. We worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you for your holy presence. Thank you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Sing again, please.
every head bowed, every eye closed, I sense the Holy Spirit moving, convicting the heart of sin, convincing the heart of righteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor Rod, I've heard God speak to my heart. I want to be right in the middle of what he's doing. I want his presence on my life. And I want to surrender today completely, fully, wholeheartedly. I want to surrender to Jesus and let him be Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. I want my joy back and my peace back. I want to feel God's presence. I don't want to be critical. I, I don't want to be a complainer. I, I don't want, I don't want to, Lord. I just, I just feel empty inside. Jesus, would you come and fill my life today with your holy presence? Forgive me, Lord. I just, I've sinned. But, oh, God. I want you in my life more than I want my next breath. I need you, Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you, when I say three, just raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Leave it up. Leave it up. Leave it up. There are well over a hundred people with their hands raised. Can we just pray this prayer of surrender? Can we just pray it all of us together? Heavenly Father. Today, Today, I choose, I choose, I choose, I choose to, follow to follow Jesus, to get my eyes off other people, and get my eyes only on you. Jesus, forgive me. Come into my life with all your fullness. I surrender. Everything, Everything to you. To you. Fill, my life now Fill my life now with your holy presence. With your holy presence. Lead, me. Lead me, guide me. Guide. Give me your peace, me your peace. <laughs> and your joy. And your joy. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, everybody turn to somebody next to you and don't tell a lie, but if you're on fire, tell them it's good to be in the flames with you. Tell them it's good to be in the flames with you. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 11, verse 11. One verse. Luke chapter 11, verse 11. Find your Bible. Get it open. Luke chapter 11, verse 11. Hallelujah. All right. Here it is. Look at it in your own Bible. If you don't have it, you can look up here. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? It's Jesus talking. Or if he ask for a fish, will he for a fish? Give him a serpent. Next verse. You don't have it. If you don't have it, shout out, I don't have it, honey. Okay, thank you. Who's got it? Thank you, elder. Yeah, yeah, I knew there was an egg in there. Or if he asks for an egg... Will you offer him a scorpion? Okay. Close your Bible. Now say this. God wants me whole. Spirit, soul, body, and all that pertains to life and godliness. Do you believe this is the will of your Father for you? Okay, I'm going to try again. Do you believe this is the will of your Father for you? Yes. Now, some folks, some folks, you know, they don't have a good father 
model in their life. I understand that. But if you've been in the kingdom of God very long, you've got a good model. Uh, his name is Jesus. Now then, now then, if we call on him, he promised he would answer us. And he said, I will give you great and mighty things and show you great and mighty things that you don't know anything about. That's his word. His word said, ask and you'd receive. Knock, seek, and you shall find. Knock and it'll be opened unto you. Do you believe this? Yes. Do you believe this? Yes. Then it said, you shall have anything that you ask. Whatever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. Then it, Jesus said, whatever you ask me, I'll give it to you so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hmm. God wants you saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and power, healed and whole in your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's the will of God concerning you. Yes. It's not some other will. It's not the will for some other people. It's the will of God concerning you. Do you believe this? Yes. It's God's will. God wants you healthy. God wants you wealthy. God wants you to operate in wisdom. Do you believe this? Yes. Then would you agree with me that all of us need to move forward toward that yes. instead of resisting that? God is a good, good father. That's who he is. Say, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. If you believe that, then give him a praise. He's a good father. If you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. If you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. If you ask for an egg, he's not going to give you a scorpion. He's going to give you a fish if you ask for a fish. He's going to give you an egg if you ask for an egg. Do you believe this? The will of God concerning you is in 3 John 2. I will above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. It's just that simple. Yes. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and his word healed you, spirit, soul, and body, and in all that pertains to life and godliness. Isaiah 53 5. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of all your peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes you are healed. Isaiah 53, he bore all your sicknesses and diseases and carried all of your pain. 1 Peter 2, 24, he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, chastisement of your peace was laid upon him, and with and by his stripes you were healed. Yes. Spirit, soul, and body. So if you were, then you are. I had such a good message for you this morning, but I'll not, I'll not get to it. If God had not wanted to make you whole, he shouldn't have. Your healing, your wholeness, your prosperity, your victory, your joy, your peace are not promises. They're facts. They're already established. 
Where there is no faith concerning the will of God, manifestations cannot take place. Perfect faith can only begin where the will of God is known. See, that's why I just gave you His will. I'm not giving you some philosophy. I'm not giving you some person's opinion. This is just straight out gospel, Bible, facts. What you must never do is interpret God's word by your experience. You must have your experience adjusted by God's word because your experience is a fact, but God's word is truth. And truth changes fact. Fact does not change truth. Amen, amen, amen. Say, God wants me well. God wants me blessed. God wants me joyful. God wants me peaceful. God wants me in victory. This is God's will concerning me. And I intend to have God's will. Now give him praise for it. But you, you have to do something. Because God is not going to impose his will on you. Now, there are seven major ways as we head into 11, 11, 18. We had service on 8, 8, 18. We had service on 9, 9, 18. We had service on 10, 10, 18. And we're going to have service on 11, 11, 18. Where I will be joined on this platform. God said, you want me to do something I've never done in prayer cloth service? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, then I want you to join two anointings with yours. And he told me very plainly, I want you to invite Bishop George Bloomer, and I want him to minister in the area of deliverance, spiritual deliverance. He said, I want you to minister, meaning me, on physical healing. I said, yes, sir. And he said, then I want you to have Real Talk Kim minister in the realm of soul ties, soulish relationships, mental anguish, bondage to your past and I want all three of you on the platform at the same time releasing that anointing all over the world through prayer cloth so on 11 11 Sunday night November the 11th miracle healing and victory prayer cloth service myself Bishop George Bloomer and Real Talk Kim uh, you want to be a part of that so there are seven ways Jesus healed. I'm just going to give them to you. I'm not going to preach them. Number one, by the laying on of hands. Number two, by the spoken word. Speak your word only and my servant shall be healed. Number three, by holy communion, which you elders need to have ready that night. I may serve everybody holy communion because there's healing in that bread and there's healing in that cup. Number four, by the shadow. Thank you, Miss Joni. Cast that shadow. Number five, by the oil of anointing. Number six, you pray for yourself. Highest form of healing, James 5.13. Is any afflicted, let him pray. All the other stuff just to help you. But God really expects that you just walk in divine health by just praying for yourself. But the church is weak, so it doesn't do that. Number, number seven, you pray for others. Pray you one for another that you may be healed. Number nine, the prayer of agreement. The reason I'm experiencing such revival is because, thank God, Pastor Tim and the, and the local church leadership team have been getting hundreds of people to pray for me during every service that I'm preaching on the road. 
I believe I preached in nine states in 15 days and I've preached 12 times. Seeing thousands born again. Uh, number eight, the gifts of healings. The gifts of healings. Number nine, the prayer of agreement. Number 10, prayer with fasting. We've got to fast going into 1111. You want to see miracles, we have to fast. You want to see deliverances, we have to fast. Number 11 is by the tangible anointing, yoke destroying, burden removing of a prayer cloth. It's one of the ways Jesus heals. Number 12 is for you to do as Hannah and Cornelius did. Mix your praying and your giving. Sow a seed. Why? A seed's a representation of your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's just do that. Yeah. Let's receive the morning's tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. You need a healing. Spirit, soul, body, relationships, financially. You need a healing. Direct a seed this morning toward that need. That's the Bible way of getting your needs met. There are the ways you can do it. You can make checks payable to World Harvest Church. You can do what my family and I do, text the amount to World Harvest Church, or text the amount. You put the dollar sign, then the amount, then WHC, and you text that to 45777. Or if you're watching rodparsley.com, you just click on the screen and follow what it shares with you to do. Father, thank you for your presence this day. I don't ask the people to give today, Lord, so that some need can be met. I ask them that by your Holy Spirit, they will give as you direct them for the furtherance of the gospel. Thank you for 23 churches in Pakistan. Thank you that the blind are seeing. Thank you that the dead are coming to life. Thank you for thousands being born again and churches being birthed. Thank you that demons are coming out and you're being glorified. Thank you for what you've done here today. Let every one of us today sow a seed above our tithe, believing that this revival continue and that God's word continues to bless the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. You may give us unto the Lord. Uh, the event that we had scheduled for today has been moved, if you weren't informed, our Faultastic Festival has been moved to this Wednesday night. So everything we were going to do on Sunday, we're going to do on Wednesday because we had a real, a real indication of some pretty severe inclement weather. So we're rearranging things, moving things inside for Wednesday night. Is that right? Yes. I've got it right. Correct. Okay. And uh, I want to thank those of you. Don't you love the online audience? All those millions of people. God bless you. We love you so much. Be blessed now, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you. God bless you. What else do I need to tell them about? Pastor, I can help you a little bit. I wish you would. Um,